want to welcome everyone to Taking a Walk with HTL. This is July the 17th, 2012, and we are just wonderfully blessed. I tell you what, God is so gracious and so pure and so good. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask you that by your Holy Spirit that you will come and into this place where we have gathered ourselves together. Lord, we remember the book of Acts that says that they, in, in chapter 2, that they, meaning the apostles and the 120 that were with them, were gathered together in one place. And I want you to know that, Lord, we are in one place. Father, our minds are turned toward your word. Our hearts are turned toward your word. Our, our desire is toward your heart. And so, Father, we come in one accord, and we ask, God, that the Holy Spirit come and touch us each individually and corporately as we have need. Father, we pray over this side, and we ask you, Father, that your blessing, your power, and your glory rest upon it. And that, Lord, that you turn a sword in every direction on the hand of angels to protect it from satanic attack. And that, Lord, that those who would come to bring disruption, those who would come to bring a division or whatever it might be in their heart, that, God, that you would turn them away in Jesus' name. And Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We ask, Father, that you, by your Holy Spirit, that you will cause us to recognize and know right individually where we are in our home, where we are in front of our computer at this time, in this place, that, Father, you are present and that you are here with us and that, Lord, that you will let us know by a physical manifestation of your presence that, God, your love is true and that your glory is upon us. Hallelujah. For the glory of God is rising up in the body of Christ and we are expressly members of your body. We bless you, Father. We glorify you, and we ask you that as we share this time together tonight, that, Lord, that you will bless each ear. You will bless my words and my heart and my speech, that, Lord God, your name might be praised and lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. I tell you what. I have, uh, I have been uh, just kind of sort of, I've taken a, a few nights off. I have uh, uh, taken some time and drawn myself away uh, from uh, constant, constant, constant uh, Internet ministry and have got myself before the Lord and ministered in other places and been ministered to, praise God, had hands laid on me, have been slain in the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and that the Lord God has energized and, and spoken into my spirit and given me wonderful things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And I'm, I'm excited about it. And I hope that it's evident in, in the tone of my voice and in my words and in my heart toward each and every one of you. Wild hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. I'm independent, interdenominational, charismatic, Pentecostal, Methodist, Baptist, Woo, you name it. Praise God. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I don't care what's over the name. I don't care what name is over the door. I don't care how, what denominational lines. I don't care what they are. The Holy Ghost is bringing us together like we've never been before. Woo, I'm, I'm, I'm getting over into Thursday. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what. God is doing a work in His body. I don't care what I don't care what church you sit in, you're hearing about Jesus, that's all that matters. I don't care what state you live in, and I don't care if you go to church on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't care what day you go to church on, if you're hearing Jesus, you're where you need to be. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever and ever. You know what? Because His mercy endures forever. You know what? I was lost and undone. But his mercy endured forever. I was dead in my sins, but his mercy endures forever. I was deserving of death and hell, but his mercy endures forever. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart because 
His mercy endures forever. Oh, hallelujah. His redemptive work has been accomplished in each one of us because His mercy endures forever. I tell you what, you cannot go where God cannot be for His mercy endures forever. You cannot go where God cannot seek you out and bring you to His own because His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I tell you what, the Word of God is powerful and sharp, and it is quick. Amen, amen, Port. His mercy endures forever. I tell you what, there isn't anything that we can do that will turn His face away from us. Are you listening? I, I tell you what, we are so precious, and we are so important. To God's heart, that He'll go wherever we go. He will sit down wherever we sit. He will get involved in whatever we're involved in, just to let us know of His love and His glory. Oh, Father, we, we glorify You. Yes, Lord. You know, His Word penetrates our heart. His Word divides what we're thinking and what we believe. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all do know that we, we, <laughs> we believe things that we don't think about. And, and we think about things we don't believe. And the Word of God separates those. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we praise you and glorify you. Hallelujah. I'm trying to get back on track here. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God, I'll tell you what, I'm so excited. It, it's, just, it's just good to be excited about being excited. Praise the Lord. Whoa, glory. I want to read some scripture to us uh, because I want to talk about something that God did and accomplished uh, in prison those many years ago. And uh, especially, uh, I, I, I shared the last time we were on this program, Taking a Walk with HDL, and we, I shared about how that God brought Bibles into our hands. Now, for those that maybe not have been here in those things, uh, I was born again in, in a prison system in Montana. And at the particular time, way back in the 1971, well, uh, out where I were, there was no Bibles. You know, everybody thinks, well, there's, pri there's Bibles all over prison. Well, there is now, but there wasn't back then. And so... Uh, uh, when we got Bibles in our hands, we were really, really excited. And uh, I, I was a trustee when I got born again, and <clears throat> I shared that some folks that were doing a extraordinary amount of time, uh, kind of sort of like me, I was doing natural life plus 20 years, and they escaped. And uh, because of that, they took all of us that had uh, uh, excessive sentences, so to speak, and took us back into the uh, maximum security behind the walls. Now, because we were behind the walls, uh, <clears throat> you would think, well, you, you know, you're in a cell. Yes, we were. We, we were two men in a cell that was uh, five feet, five feet wide by nine feet long. And uh, we, we uh, uh, they had a chaplain, and we asked the chaplain about Bibles, and they didn't have any. He had already... Uh, uh, giving them all out, and so we 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 tried to find these Bibles. Uh, we we asked the all, all the inmates, you know, we we ask around and we ask where you got a Bible, you got a Bible. Well, some people would say, well, I had one, but um, I I took the pages out and rolled cigarettes with them. Well, <laughs> I guess that'll work. Praise God, things that you can do. Praise the Lord, poet. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise God. So, when we got Bibles, we got really, really excited. <laughs> oh, amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm reading some of the text. If God be for us, who can be against us? I'm a tongue-talking Pentecostal Christian. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. So is Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God. <laughs> In fact, we're going to look at some scriptures this evening because when we got Bibles, 
when we got Bibles. <laughs> but you're healed now. <laughs> well, praise God, I hope you heal from sickness. I hope you heal from sickness and not heal from speaking in tongues. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's good to laugh too, I'm telling you. Can you have fun in God? Somebody, somebody tell me whether or not I can have fun uh, being at church. Can I laugh being at church? Can I have fun? Can I shout and jump? Can I, can I run amok and cause a scene? Can I do that? <laughs> I believe so. I tell you what, if church is not fun, I don't want to do it. Praise the Lord. I tell you what. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is our strength, is it not? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want to look at some scripture out of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Uh, now, when we got Bibles, uh, we, we, we read them like a person who would sit down and eat a meal. Uh, do you follow me? Uh, when you sit down and eat a meal, you eat everything. And so we, when we got Bibles, I read the New Testament in three days. And so we do not. Uh, we, and, and, you, and you can't read the Bible in three days and know exactly what it said. <laughs> I mean, there, there's lots of goodies in there. But what I'm saying is, this was so precious. This was so desirous. It was such a deep longing and such a powerful desire within our heart to have a Bible in our hands. Well, the way the Bibles came about was over a little bit of time, probably two, three weeks, maybe maybe even a month. Uh, I led a, a prison guard to the Lord uh, going back and forth to lunch when he would call me out of line to shake me down to see if I was stealing anything. And so I would tell him when he was uh, patting me down and seeing if I had anything uh, on me. Well, see, he was a captive audience. He, <laughs> he, he, was, he was right there. He, was, he had to pat me down. He couldn't. He couldn't just uh, send me on my way, and so he was kind of a captive audience. And I would tell him about my testimony, and I would tell him about Jesus. And it come as the days and, and the weeks went by that this particular prison guard would pick me out of the line every day. Of course, we went three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and supper. And so I was, uh, when he was on shift, of course, and... Uh, every time he would pull me out to shake me down, I would share Jesus with him. Well, he accepted Jesus and became a Christian, and he brought us Bibles. I'm telling you what, if God doesn't, if, if, if man doesn't have a way, God will make one. Are you hearing me? When God, when, when you don't know the way, when you don't have a way, when you've done everything you know to do, just stand back, remain calm, wait on God, and watch Him make a way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, this prison guard brought us Bibles. And I tell you what, we read them Bibles day and night. We read them, and yes, indeed, God is good all the time. Hallelujah. And He is for us all the time. <clears throat> So the wonderful thing was we had Bibles in our hands. And we ate the Scripture. And we read it continuously, day and night. And then we would go out on the yard, and this is where the name of this program come from. We would go out on the yard, and because there could never be more than three persons in any one place being still. Because if you had a gathering of more than three people out on the yard... Then the guards would come out on the walls with guns and all of that and break everybody up. But if you were walking, if you were moving, then they would let you stay together. And so we would walk and talk about Jesus. And when, when we walked and talked about Jesus, God made his word real. So as we began to read and as we began to see, well, the Lord, uh, have you ever had God... Uh, make a scripture jump off of the page at you. You know, when you're reading your Bible, and all of a sudden something seems to be in great big bold letters, and all, and it just jumps off of the page at you. And so, <laughs> amen, that's what makes it real. And so what, 
what happened was, is this portion of Scripture that I want to share with you, uh, that's what it did. It jumped off of the page at me. And when it did, I understood. Now, let me, uh, let me take just a moment and, and dip into Thursday. There are three words <clears throat> that we as Christians should be extremely interested in. There are three words which depict three levels, and that's a good guess, <laughs> which depict three levels of where we should be. And those three words are knowledge, wisdom, understanding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. The book of Proverbs says, get knowledge. And wisdom is more precious than rubies. So above all, get wisdom. But then he says, with all of your getting... With all of your knowledge getting, with all of your getting of knowledge, he says, get understanding. And those three things should be something that each one of us, as Christian men and women, should be doing all of our Christian life, is that we should be getting knowledge. We should be getting wisdom. But he said, in all of your getting... Get understanding. Because without understanding, you see, knowledge is no good without wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to put knowledge to work and create with it. But without understanding, neither the wisdom nor the knowledge has the purity or the power that God intended it to have. And so with when we understand something, that's what is called rhema revelation. It's revelation that comes alive. And so when these words jumped off of the page, I knew that God was speaking to me. I knew that God was speaking directly to me, not, not to my cellmate. Uh, not to my friends, not to my other brothers, but to me personally. And when I was reading and these words leaped off of the page, Mark 16 and verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. Wow. Go into all of the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, of course, I realize, and each one of us realize, that we, being one person, cannot go into all of the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So there has to be a large number of ones. Do you follow what I just said? There has to be a big, large number of ones. And each one of us, as we go into our part of the world, we preach the gospel to the entire world. Because, you see, Jesus isn't just uh, locked in to the United States. Jesus is just, uh, he, he's not locked in to, to just North America. But Jesus is in the entirety of the earth. And that he is in every nation. And he is in every tongue. And he is in every kindred of people. And he is everywhere. And so when all of those ones all over the world go into their place, you see, my place is Amarillo. I have a mission field. I'm called to the mission just like you are. You're called to be a missionary to the city and the town and the neighborhood that you live in. And Amarillo, 
is my is my mission field. Glory to God. For you see, God has placed us purposely and in the exact physical location where you are by divine appointment. You're not where you are by accident. You're where you are, and you influence the people you influence by divine appointment. Glory be to God. And I understood that my mission field was that prison. I understood that I I didn't need to be overly concerned about getting out. I didn't need to be overly concerned about being free from the walls of that prison. Because in my spirit, I was freer in that prison than I ever had been outside of it. And the thing of it was, is that in when God jumped this word off of the page, I understood this. And in all of you getting, get understanding. You see, understanding comes through revelation. When revelation comes, you understand things. And you know, the clearer that you see things, the greater is the understanding. And so the thing of it is, is that the clearer that you see the Word of God, the greater is your understanding. And when you have the greater understanding, then you have the greater ability to express to others what God is saying in it. Oh, I tell you what, God God is so interested in using you as a vessel and an instrument and a tool in His hand to increase the kingdom of heaven in the earth. Oh, I tell you what, Praise God forevermore. <clears throat> we gloriously are precious to Him. Now then, verse 16. He who believes. Now then, I'm going to add some words to this. But in, in, in adding the words, I'm not going to take away anything from it or necessarily add to it. It's just going to bring clarity. Now, he who believes what I say, now, not what I, David, say, but what I, Jesus, say. And he that believes what I say and is baptized will be saved. And, and we already know about that. We confess Jesus with our mouth, and we believed in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And what a being, what a bang, we are saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I know I'm saved. I don't have to wonder about it. I don't have any questions about it. I know I'm saved because my life changed instantly. Hallelujah. It didn't take two weeks. It didn't take, it took three seconds. Well, maybe it didn't take that long. It was instant. There was changes instantly in my life. And as we come into the kingdom of God and we're baptized, we're saved. Well, People come into the kingdom of God, and they're not baptized yet. But I'll tell you what, they saved. There's too many people standing around saying, if you don't aren't baptized in water, and if you ain't baptized in the right name, you ain't going to heaven. You're not saved. i got news for you, brethren. You don't need to be baptized to be saved. It's following the rules. That's all. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I, I don't... <laughs> Let me let me get away from that because I'll get myself in trouble. And and I kind of like to be in trouble, by the way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And this is some more that jumped off of the page. And these signs. Somebody say signs. These <laughs> Signs, and these signs shall follow them that believe. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you what, God is so good. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now then, these signs shall follow them that believe what I said. That's kind of, that's what Jesus is saying. And these signs will follow those who believe what I said. 
when they go out in my name, they will cast out demons. They will. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, um, well, maybe if we want to. I tell you what, when you walk through the door, demons start moving. Do you hear me? <laughs> uh, maybe you ain't never heard this in church. But you see, the thing of it is, you don't have to talk to it. You don't have to talk to a devil to cast it out. You don't have to point your finger in somebody's face and scream as loud as you can, come out in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is be in the vicinity. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Now, I understand that, that all of the preaching and all of the teaching and all of that says, you know, you got to, you got to cast them out. Well, yeah, we do. But I'm here to tell you, because of the anointing and because of the Holy Spirit and because of the Son of the living God who lives in you, when you're in the vicinity of the devil, they move it. I tell you what, all you've got to do is observe when you go to church on Sunday morning and you walk in the door and stuff starts happening. That is, if you're not part of the stuff that's what's happening. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, we, we have people that come into our chat room right here, and their, their purpose is to come in here and, and to, to uh, uh, throw stuff out of kilter. Well, I'm telling you what, uh, the glory of God is bigger than that. And so the anointing that's on your life when you walk in the door just starts moving devils around. I guarantee you it's true. If you, you never took notice, uh, take notice next time you go to church. If you're a person who believes that these signs shall follow you and that you believe that these things follow you. You see, I believe what Jesus said. I don't know about you. I believe what Jesus said. And Jesus said, these signs shall follow. They didn't, they're not going to go in front of you. They're not going to uh, walk beside you. They're going to follow you. Well, what? how come they're going to follow you? Because of verse 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I understood that what I needed to do was to tell people about Jesus, and, and these signs would start happening. What signs? They shall cast out devils. They, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Whoa! Somebody say, whoa! Hallelujah! You know what? Ever since that day, now that day was nearly 40 years ago. And from that day to this, my mindset, my faith, and my belief has not changed in those words one iota. You see, when Jesus said, these fine signs shall follow them that believe, I understood that when I told people about Jesus, these things would happen. And they have, and they do, and they will until Jesus takes the church and delivers it from this world. You got to know and got to understand that these signs follow them Oh, I lost sound. All right. No microphone detected. Oh, okay. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Okay. Can you all hear me? My, my computer just told me uh, that I, I no microphone detected. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Okay. I understood that these would follow. So you know what I did? I started expecting it. <laughs> I started expecting it. I started looking for it. Not not when I was just out there doing nothing, because you see when 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 you're talking about how pretty your dog is or how lovely your car is or or you're talking about your garden, these signs do not follow them. 
that do those things. These signs follow them which go into all the world and share or preach or give that which they have within themselves when they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that was shed abroad in their heart begins to issue out of you and begins to come alive up in you and that gushes out on them. You see, the word shed. Oh, hallelujah. I did, I did a word study on the scripture that says that the word, the love of God has been, or the, or the, uh, the grace of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, that word shed abroad, that statement shed abroad means to gush out. It means to rush out. Woo! I'm telling you what, that when you share the love of Jesus Christ, when you speak of the kingdom of God principle, when you testify of what God has accomplished and brought about in your life, you are gushing out God's grace. You are pouring Him out. And you know what the Bible says? That signs will follow it. The book of Acts in chapter 2. <laughs> I throwed my Bible down. I got too excited. <laughs> I throwed my Bible down. Let me find it. Acts chapter 2. <laughs> Praise God. I, I tell you what, I, I just have a blast uh, in, in, in ministering the gospel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's see. Oh, oh wait a minute. Let me pour, before I go there, let me go back to Mark 16. Now, go all the way down. Go all the way down to verse 20. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, listen to this. So then, verse 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down on the right hand of God. Well, glory. And they. Now, who's they? Now, every one of you right now have they pictured as the apostles, don't you? Well, I'm here to tell you that there was 120 folks in that upper room. <coughs> there was 120 yeah, that's what I'm, that's what I, verse, verse 20, and they went forth, and, well, they, well, see, when we said they, everybody thought the apostles, no, 120 days, 120 ones went forth and preached everywhere. Oh, glory to God, are, are y'all catching this? They is the 120 in the upper room. Amen to that. But when you get over into Acts chapter 2, and you get over when, when the, 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 the 3,000, whoo, are, are you listening to me? When the 3,000 were saved, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm here to tell you that they became part of the day. Exponentially increased church. Superlifus. <laughs> Woo-hoo, praise God is right. I'm telling you, when you touch the life of another person, you are increasing the kingdom of God. Now then, so what we've got is we've got the they that believe what he said. Now, listen to me, because there are they that do not believe what he says. You remember the verse of Scripture, and this just now popped into my brain, so I got no reference for it. But it's truth. The, the Scripture says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I tell you to do? <laughs> That's pretty simple. <laughs> Why do you call me Lord, and don't do what I tell you to do? And you will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not in your name prophesied? Have we not in your name uh, done many wondrous works? Have we not accomplished what your word says we have? And he says, I tell you the truth. Get the hints from me, for I have never known you. Man, isn't that awesome? Now, you know what? 
in church, those kind of verses don't preach real good. Because it puts people on the edges of their seats. Because it makes you look within your own spirit and your own heart. And that's what they're designed to do. Are you walking with Jesus? Or are you just playing a game with his name? Remember when the, I, I tell you what, I've got, I've got stuff pouring into my heart and in my spirit, and I don't know where the re- references are. But do you remember when Jesus and the disciples were walking along, and the disciples came running up, and he said, Hey, there's some folks over over yonder on the other side of the river over yonder. They over there casting out devils and doing stuff in your name, and they're not with us. Remember that? <laughs> I tell you what, there, there's <laughs> there's things there's things in the New Testament that go beyond what we ever hear in church. There are things going on out in the world when you get out there and you get in there and you walk worthy of the grace that is in you, and you become responsible for the word that has been fed into you. You will begin to notice. I, I do. I, I see people that I know that are not Christians. They they do not profess Christ. They do not go to church. They do they they do not. But yet they do Christian things. They love their neighbor. They heal the sick. They take care of the tormented. They do all kinds of things, but yet they are not Christians. You know what Jesus said? Leave them alone. <laughs> Whoa, you can't be doing that. I'm supposed to be doing that. Well, why aren't you? <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the way we used to talk to each other in prison. We used to call each other meatheads. Because we'd start thinking with our fleshly mind instead of thinking with the heart and the love of God. We'd start thinking with that me head. And that's what we would call each other. Hey, me head, get off of me. And we would direct one another back to the Word of God. I'll tell you what, it's powerful. And that's why we gather here in this one place. Uh, That's why this, that's why this Christian sight is such, is so powerful. That's why it, 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 it experiences some of the horrible things it does. It's because it touches people with the love, the grace, the power, and the deliverance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry if I'm kind of advertising things, but I get to. Uh, I'm part of the administration. Hello. Praise God. Do something in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now then, and they went out and they preached everywhere. And they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. The Lord working with them. Now, church... God wasn't in doing it. You know, too many of us want to go to church and we're sitting there waiting for the Holy Ghost to fall up front where the preacher is and he start calling people up to the altar and start praying for them and they start laying all out in the floor. That's what we want to see. Well, a a deceitful... (laughs) Generation. I can't remember the other word. There's two words. (laughs) <laughs> seeks after signs. I tell you what, I don't go to church seeking for signs. I go to church for signs to follow me around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you listening? Because when I go to church, I, I'm not the preacher. I'm not the minister. I'm a, I'm a pew warmer. I'm sitting out there. I'm not doing the ministry. But I'm telling you, while we're in there, minister to people. Glory to God. Too many preachers think they got it. 
And all they've got is a house full of people that have it. Are you hearing me? Quit looking up front and start looking within. Oh, I know. When you start doing some of those kind of things, well, they're going to disfellowship you. And they're going to tell you they don't need you. And they're going to tell you to get on down the line. Well, that's because God wants you out of there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I'll tell you what, I was in a church not long ago, and we were happy there. We loved it there. And you know what? We're not there no more. <laughs> yes, indeed. We are there to feed others. Amen. I mean, we sit at the same table. We share the same food. And I tell you what, when when one don't have a plate full, share with what you got. Praise God. And and that's in the church. Woo! Glory, hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm going to prophesy right now that there is going to become a change in the order of the churches that we attend. And it will slowly develop. That the minister, the preacher, the pastor, the one who supposedly runs everything, is going to become less and less. And they that attend it and gather themselves together in one place, come into one accord and worship together and glorify God together, and they will become the ministerial force. In the church. Woo! Yes, indeed. The, the, the day of the church, the day of the, of, of, of the pastoral power in the church is over. <laughs> and listen, I'm part of that pastoral force. And I'm so ready for it to be over. I'm so ready for the body of Christ to rise up. And I'm telling you that the glory of God is rising into the body of Christ. And it's coming up. And there are people who are experiencing new and fresh winds and breath of the Holy Spirit within them. And they are beginning to say and to do things that they have not done before. And they have begun to disrupt the places that they are. And people are beginning to look at them and say, what are you doing? And they're beginning to question what's going on in them. And God is bringing His body to the forefront. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! You're just going to have to forgive me because I'm full of it. And God's grace and glorious power is upon His body. I'll tell you what, we are in the day and we are in the time in which the eyes, the, the eyes of God won't be looking to and fro to find someone they will be found. Do you hear me? Oh, glory to His glorious and holy name. We're not sign seekers, folks. We just walk around and they happen. Do you hear me? Not because... Not because of what we are, but because of whose we are. You know, when we understand who we are in Christ, we don't have any trouble with things like this. It's when we don't know who we are, it's when we have trouble with the Word of God. And you know, I am convinced in my spirit, and I'm convinced in my mind, that God is going to bring understanding into the church of who we are. Because when we understand who we are in Christ, then there is no power, no weapon that is formed against us will prosper. We'll walk where angels fear to tread. Oh, I know. Those things have been said for a long, long time. But I tell you this, that there are gifts and there are supernatural abilities within each and every one of you that God wants to push 
the do button on. That God wants to somehow I'm not I'm not there. Hallelujah. There are things that God wants to accomplish in your life, out of your life. And each and every one of us need to become one of those people who believe what Jesus said. Now, in all of the years that's gone by since those prison days, and that lovely, horrendous relationship with God and the Holy Spirit and my Lord Jesus Christ, they haven't changed. I'm still just as fanatical, and I'm still just as crazy about Jesus as I ever have been. And I'm still just as loving as I was way back then. Because, you see, Jesus is the one who made the difference. And Jesus is the one who will always make the difference. Now, we took a walk tonight, and HTO (laughs) did all the talking. But I, I want to say to you, my dear brother, sister, God is so for you that nothing can be against you. And when you have in your heart the desire to be afraid, look straight up and understand that he is with you and that you are greater than anything in this world. Oh, I know and I understand that circumstances and situations in our life are hard. I got them too. I face them every day just like everybody else. I think sometimes because of the revelation that is in our life, and I say our because Tiger Passion and I, we're one. And our ministry is one. And some of the things that we face in life are so horrifically, emotionally, uh, mentally, physically uh, uh, debilitating sometimes. But you know what we do? Some, most people say, well, the thing you got to do is fall on your knees. Well, no, we don't fall on our knees. No, we stand up on our feet. And we look up. And we profess that Jesus is greater than anything we're looking at. And we, we make it through. Praise God. So now then. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I give you thanks for this time that you have so honored me with to enter the home and enter the life of these people gathered in this place, to speak a word in season to the hearts. Lord, I have ears on my head, and I hear, and I receive those things spoken also. God, I ask you tonight that, Lord, you be with those. You be with Jade, as we have learned this morning that her mother passed away while she was asleep. She didn't even get to say goodbye to her mother. And, Lord, her heart is stricken with grief. And we ask, Lord, that you be with Jade and you comfort her. And, Lord, we just bless you and we praise you and we glorify you, Lord. And we thank you. And, Lord, RCF, Lord, her mom fell. And, God, we just ask that you just be with these folks. And we ask for your comfort and your grace to be upon them. And that, Lord, God, that you would be the comforter. And you would be the friend where there is no friend. And, Lord, you're the only one that really has a word and really has an action that is comforting in times like these. Father, we cast about in our mind, and we don't find the right words. But, Lord, you have the right words. And so, Father God, we release these folks into your hands. And people that we do not know about, that have shared during the day while have not been here, and, God, that you would be with them also. Now, Lord, as we go our separate ways, we ask that you go with us, prepare our time before us, and that, God, you keep us ever mindful that you are with us, and that you desire to touch someone with what is in us. In Jesus' name, 
Amen.